Hello, Dave's here. Today we're going to talk about the KH3 Remind DLC secret episode endings, how it connects to director Tetsuya Nomura's dream project, and where the series might be going. Obviously I'm going to spoil quite a bit of the game, so if you still haven't seen the secret episode, well, you know what to do. With that said, let's get on with this discussion. Now before we get into what all of this means, there's one thing we all need to realize and accept. First of all, a lot of people seem to dismiss the clear similarities of KH3 with Versus 13, Nomura's dream project that was reworked into Final Fantasy 15. A lot of people like to ignore this fact in favor of saying that all the characters are just alternate reality versions of Kingdom Hearts cast, and all the similarities are nothing more than just references to Versus 13. Similarly, people like to dismiss the possibility of this actually being an alternate reality versions of the characters in favor of Versus 13. If we want to come to a conclusive conclusion on this matter, we need to realize one thing. Yes, Yozora is versus Noctis. Yes, the Nameless Star is Stella and Yozora's friends are a metaphor for bros from Versus and 50. However, Noctis and bros are Final Fantasy characters that exist. They are not scrapped. They have their story and the end of that story. So even if Yozora is Noctis, it doesn't mean he's Noctis in Kingdom Hearts. Yozora is a metaphor for versus Noctis. However, in Kingdom Hearts universe, in story of Kingdom Hearts, he can be written as alternate version of Riku or something. It still doesn't change the fact that he's supposed to be Noctis, however his role in Kingdom Hearts can be different than we think. So yeah, I hope you follow me along this far. Now that we got this out of the way, let's start a discussion on what the hell happened in good and bad endings of Remind. Let's start with the bad ending. First of all, Sora is being crystallized, which is a Final Fantasy XIII concept. The idea is Sora is not dead, but preserved until the time for him to return comes again. Yozora seems to believe that Sora is in some danger and wants to protect him. Interesting enough, if you beat him and get the good ending, Yozora doesn't crystallize Sora, saying that his powers aren't needed yet, which seemed to indicate for me that after Sora was able to defeat him, Yozora was convinced that Sora can protect himself, which is why he leaves him with a smile. Interesting enough, Yozora also mentions that he wandered into Final World by accident and went through some trials. Now, the trials part might be referring to Shibuya, but to me it seems he's created that arena himself around the Final World. As to how he did it, let's just say we will talk about this later. Also, it is possible that Yozora actually did wander into the world ends with you, Shibuya, and undergone a Reaper's game, and the Shibuya you fight in him is a version he created from his memory, which would explain the part about him undergoing some trials. Maybe Shibuya is some nexus for all the realists crossed together. Another interesting thing is Yozora claiming he was told by someone to save Sora. Yeah, not gonna lie, my guess on this one is as good as yours. I want to say it's Master of Masters, but it is possible that Luxord. Oh, uh, um, yeah, uh, excuse me. Luxord is actually from the world of Yozora. So, yeah, it can be anyone. It can be Donald Duck. <laughs> it was probably Goofy, though. Anyway, going back to Sora and Yozora meeting each other, Yozora seems to have a puzzle of why Sora refers to himself as Sora. People already have enough theories about Varum Rex Stella being Sora from that exact universe. And not gonna lie, even before this DLC came out, I had Sora and the Nameless Star look disturbingly similar. But there's one thing that doesn't support this theory, and that being the fact that Sora and Yuzora are opposites to each other. They were destined to meet, they say the line from KH1, and there's just too much duality going between these two, for one or the other being a different person. I'm not sure what it could mean, but for now I'll say that Sora and Yozora not being opposites to each other is very unlikely. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the final scenes. Whether you defeat or lose to Yozoro, it all comes back to one thing. Versus 13 2011 trailer, where Noctis is escorted by his driver Court to the signing ceremony party where he's met with Stella. And I think at this point you all know that Yozoro animates frame by frame exactly like Noctis does in the trailer. This obviously confirms that Yozoro is from Versus 13 universe that Namuro envisioned. And if you were following the development of Versus and 15, you'll know that these worlds were extremely different from one another. Now we don't know if Yozori is taking to signing ceremony party or is just taking a stroll in his car, as he seems to be a leader of some sorts. The driver refers to him as commander, 
But here we once again see one of many ideas from Versus 13 being realized in KH3. And this one kind of flew over everyone's head, mostly because people from KH3 never heard of Versus or didn't follow the development of Versus on 15 to know. After you defeat Yuzora, he wakes up in a car seemingly returning from the fight earlier. A lot of people think that this indicates that Kinoraz is a dream of some sort. No. You see, in Versus and 15 to some extent, Noxus can access his dreams, which are alternate realities. Noctis is constantly sleeping, and this is why. Obviously in 15 it was changed to him just being lazy, but some of the bits of Narmor's ideas for Noctis' dreams made their way in 15. In forms of Platinum Demo, where you play as Kid Noctis, Ame Trailer, Noctis is in Lostalum, and the ending where Noctis and Luna are being wet. Obviously, the concept was toned down to the point where it lost its original purpose, but you can still see how it exists. However, it seems like it's coming back for Yozora. So yeah, the reason Yozora was able to drift to Final World and even change it into Shibuya is because it's in his dream, and in his dreams, he is king. So yeah, as I said before, Yozora is versus Noctis. However, we still don't know where Nomura is going with this. The secret episode itself ends with Oath to Return, what never happened in Kingdom Hearts games. Not to mention why Oath to Return. We already know the next Kingdom Hearts game is being made, so why add it here? Well, maybe because it's there to do something else. And that something else might be a potential reboot of Versus 13 as Verum Rex. Personally, if that's the case, then I'm really hyped. Not only because I'm one of the few people who love 15 and Versus 13, an occasional revise to Versus 13 trailers, wondering what all of this could have been. But also because I'll be high for Namura to get a new IP, where he can go all out and explore the dark side of humanity, as he said before. I also take a break from Kingdom Hearts, because working on one thing all the time can burn person out both physically and mentally, which I think is happening to Namura. And if Verum Rex and Kingdom Hearts will share a universe, I'm fine with that too. It's his series. If anyone knows how to make a Kingdom Hearts game, it's Namura.